It's on Inferno, and EG will be starting on the T side with FaZe and the uh, CT side. So we'll see how that goes. It's nice of us to give EG a nice, uh, easy warm-up game to start things, to get, uh, to get comfortable with each other. Nothing like facing the number one team in the world right out of the gate. There's my boy Breeze. He's back. Well, at one point in time, Breeze was ranked very highly oh, in the world. That was a nice did. shot to bring down Kerrigan. That's beautiful. I keep it going like this. Call it. Order the champagne. This game's done. <laughs> We're ready. A couple of kills. That's all you need. Roki taking a risk to try and bring the team back. I have to appreciate it because if he doesn't, the round is probably lost no matter what. So the fact that he got a kill and still escapes is pretty cool to see. And they're already here trying to go for the retake. The bomb's not quite planted yet, but just a matter of time. Oh, yeah. This gives him a chance at the retake. Get a little bit lucky. One quick kill here. Good shot from Cirque. That puts down Broki. It's just twists. Left with his teammate Rops over towards the choke point. Two on three. There's no kit in either one of these players, so it's got to be fast. Rops is certainly looking for it. Finding the corner. Twist is out of it, so that's unfortunate. Cirque going to land that kill. And now he's even being flanked in the middle of retake, so... Yeah, if there was a chance, it had to be probably a, a quick 2-2 and then trying to see if you can find that bomb defuse and force somebody out of it. Nicely played at the end for EG. Super conservative, not really showing any kind of uh, of a fight at the end, knew, knowing that on the other side they had to come for that retake. So, well done. What a start. Yeah, I mean, it helps when Breeze just he bangs out two opening kills like that. You don't even really have to talk about tactics at that point. Five on three, you have complete banana control. Just march towards that B bomb site. So, pistol round to the North Americans. Looking for an upset. Nobody predicted them, so it would just be oh so fitting if they were able to pull it off. I feel like that's uh, it's always a good good time when that happens. I guess we should say as well, we don't really get too much time, but I know they mentioned on the desk, happy birthday to Counter-Strike. I know, it's crazy, isn't it? Ten years. Just that's, flew by. That's hard to really, it's hard to imagine. But yet, it is true. Rain stepping into the fight just a little bit, hoping for uh, anyone that he could find, but looks like EG want to... Stay safe over here in Banana. They were there initially, but oh, they're backing off. Didn't do a great job of that. Hex is down to 18 HP just through Molotovs and Nades without even seeing anyone. So early victory in Banana for FaZe Clan. But now the rifles relocate towards middle. Deagle shoots out at wrap side corner. And EG's just patient behind all the utility. Minute left on the clock. That's only one smoke left as well on Twist. So they, they can afford to be patient now. They're going to find out pretty soon that there's not that much more to slow them down with. And then they just have to avoid the Deagles. This is a good time to just kind of go through the list of obstacles that EG has. Obviously, two new players uh, with Neelan and Hex coming into the roster. Obviously, Rush coming back in for automatic is an issue. We still have the question marks about Breeze and Cirque finding some kind of resurgent form, any kind of impactful form that they can have. Uh, sure. And then you add, I mean, one of those two new players is the in-game leader. So you have an entirely new kind of philosophy and system of calling tactics uh, within the team. So a lot of issues for EG coming into this match. But then again, if they take down FaZe, what a start it will be. So, <laughs> a lot to win. If they manage to do that, that's going to give some confidence to everybody, surely. They managed to get past the pit, which is great news. And they're going to get the bomb plant. And FaZe, not surprised if they just kind of maybe linger around for a couple of kills, but ultimately save the win. I got to say, I brought it up as like an obstacle, and it, it truly is. But Rush, for me, has always been like one of those super underrated players in, in North America. I agree. Yeah, I always, I've always liked seeing him on teams. And I mean, when you look at some of the biggest successes in North America, the old Optic lineup that kind of got one of the first big trophies for NA, the Cloud9 team that won the major, Rush has been involved in those. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I really like Rush as a player. I Happy like to see him here. I feel like if you spent a whole day watching watching just demos from, from Rush's point of view, you, you'd have to constantly say, oh, he's creating like really great openings for his teammates here, or he's doing a lot of work in the background that you're, you're not realizing. He's not going to get the credit for it, but he's really like, he's working all of the background. He's, he's like the intangibles player. Yeah, which is... It's a thankless job because, again, it's really hard to see in the middle of a match. You might not realize, like, how many opportunities he's he actually created for the rest of the team. So, it's how it is, I guess. He's had, some, he's had some odd downturns, too. I mean, I don't want to say he's devoid from criticism in that sense, either. He's had, he's had some rough, rough stretches in the previous EG lineup as well coming into this. But I'd like to see him just have one really nice event on the way out. Go out on a high note. Yeah, that would be nice. And I agree, Breeze and Suck. I mean, we definitely need to see... A lot more out of those two. What was the high ranking for Breeze at one point? I swear he was was he in the top ten at one of one of these years. Breeze? Yeah. Uh, making no. Up. I don't think he was in the top ten. I swear he was high up there at one point. Anyway, I, um, we can find out. Certainly, Circus and Opera also super highly rated. 
but um, it's been a minute since we've seen anything like that, so I want to get that back a little bit. They lose Breeze, speaking of which, early on in the round. Three-man stack over at the bomb site, and already EG have spent a lot of utility to try and burn out some of the back corners, but the one smoke really slowed them down, so now they don't have those nades anymore, and they don't have the bomb site. A little bit unfortunate here. Actually, it's turned into a four-man stack at the moment, only Twist holding over at that A corner. And they kind of had this a similar sort of setup, not this much of a lean in the previous round where EG just kind of walked out halls dry. X should be able to get at least one here. So we've evened things up at four. Rops and Rain are tagged down very low. More danger from the Deagles. That's the FAMAS coming through, and it's been well traded by Hexed. Back to the A bomb site we go where Twist has been waiting this whole time. Yeah, standing out a little bit of an off angle, but walking in like that. I'm actually shocked that he got that kill. Well done. Goes to pick up the Galil and tries to buy a little bit of time with the flashbang. They're in some trouble now. 25 seconds. Nealon and Hext have to try and find a way to get that bomb part at the very least. That's a strong headshot to bring down Twist. Well done. That might actually bring them back. The health there on Rops and on Rain not looking that great at the moment. So a real chance now for EG to secure this third round, which they probably should have had all along, but... Gotta be real careful. Yeah, what an attempt from Twist as well. Unfortunately, just the overpowering overpowering weaponry of EG is gonna take his smart play out of any kind of position. Rops is the last one left. And this is just gonna dwindle down. No kit, no time. Gonna have to be aggressive at some point, and EG's playing this very smart. That's a shot and a half, but still goes down. I was gonna say, even if they don't challenge him, there if the bomb goes up eventually he could actually bring one or both of them down so there might have even been a world in which just staying alive for a long time there for ops would have even worked out but that's one hell of a shot i have the answer breeze uh, in 2019 was the number eight traded player in hltv's top 20. there we go yeah so I... you were correct number number eight and 19 and number 20 in 2020. some of those neurons in my brain found a yeah they're still firing made their they've way still through. got connections it's good times. Yeah, so, I mean, that's, that, I, I don't know what, where he is now on the scoreboard, but it's going to be quite a bit lower. So, you want to see, you want to see him return to, uh, to some of that style. Maybe not, doesn't have to shoot straight back up to top eight, eight but, um, but just, just start to get back up there. That <laughs> yeah, we'll be content with just the first step forward at this point. Three to nothing for EG. Solid start against FaZe here on Inferno. Brokey's going to be aggressive in halls, peering down the stairs with the AWP. Rops, aggressive as well for... A one-two punch, and they might not need the second one. Oh, <laughs> that smoke is so close. Rob still had his back turned. If that hadn't gone up, he would have been dead. But as it turns out, instead, Breeze going down, trying to see if he could work the angle of it. That is so crazy. Rain, he saw just the foot before the flash came through. Wanted to try and turn for it. Kerrigan is here, though, and he's going to try and buy some time. Slowing them down with the flashbang. Enough for um, Brokey to come on over and straight take down Sirk. That's a great start here. Missed the shot on Neelan, though. And if he's quick about it, maybe get the kill on a bomb plant, but otherwise, they're going to get a lot closer, so has to hurry, and Carrigan real far back at the bomb site, able to find him. It's a good round here. Yeah. Three people surviving on the side of phase. Yeah, nice patient play as well. Carrigan just doing a good job of uh, kind of pouncing off all the aggression from his teammates. First rain pushing down, banana grabs one kill after that, then Brokey with the op, and Carrigan just plays it slow and gets one more at the end. Op recovered as well, passed over to Brokey. What were you doing, Jason, and when CSGO came out? What, was it, what, what plans in your life was, were derailed by this game? Uh, plans. What are these plans you speak of in 2012? I'm sure you had some... something. I was working at a, a car factory. I was making a... I was doing a plastic mold injection. There we go. Making a vehicle grills. Classic Michigan job. Could have, could have kept doing something useful for the world. I was... yeah, I worked a job that, uh... That almost killed me, actually. So, shout out oh. to CSGO, got me out of there. <laughs> what if you end up injecting yourself with the plastic? It's like, my job was like I was, uh, we'll go through this while it's an eco round. Just, uh, it's called um, a die setter. So I had like the big molds that weighed like, you know, 10 tons, oh, yeah. 12 tons, pick them up by cranes, drop them into machine, bolt them in, you know, put all the connections up. And uh, one day the, uh, the hook holding one of the 10 pound molds broke. Oh. And snapped and would have hit me if it weren't for a steel pole in front of me. Nice. But a nice big dent in this thick steel pole. So I have that mounted in my house. <laughs> the hook that almost killed me. That's great. About That's a, a really it's about 12 story. inches away. I like it. I mean, I don't like the part where you die, but still. That's exciting. Yeah, so all right. That's a save by Counter-Strike again. That's nice. Yeah. Ooh, good job. Rob's coming up with a couple of kills there. They only lose a single player. That's 
it's worth keeping an eye on you know three people living in the in the previous round four of them in this round and they're going to keep building the money which is ultimately going to be a real big problem for eg if it goes like this uh... wow right through the edge of the wall i was gonna say the second one was harder than the first one but... yeah it really was oh you never know those those little like slow creeps into your crosshair are really awkward shots at times here we go round six it's three to two eg with a one round lead banana control has been uh been in a struggle outside of the pistol round for EG. They've taken a lot of damage here. Previous round as well. Rain and Kerrigan did a good job shutting it down. And there's Twist with the deep nade to the bottom of mid to find a kill on a Neelan. Yeah, that's a struggle, definitely. And you're right, FaZe. But then again, I'm not really surprised. They do have uh, a pretty good setup over here. Kerrigan and Rain. A lot of the time, you can probably trust uh, Rain to, to try and hold this on his own if, it, if need be. Pop flash in hand for rain if anything happens. And right now, Faze look content to uh, to just have twist on that slightly forward position in middle. That's kind of the the most information they have at the moment. Roki now taking over on the other side. So nice little back and forth going on over there. Twist falling back into the bomb side, but Broki now taking the archway instead. So they keep having a look into what's happening in middle, which is great for the CT side. Get some information. Down to 40 seconds at the moment. Looks like they're going to come back and try and hit this bomb site, which could work out. Kerrigan has no more smokes, none of those rain, so they have they have a chance at it. It's kind of all they have left at this point. 40 seconds on the clock, you have no map control, you have no mid control, and your player down. Yeah, just fall into the B hit. You can see FaZe already knows it's coming. There's an early rotation to get Baroki over here as well. Likely to boost up rain, but Kerrigan, he's going to get one. Rush looking in the wrong direction. There's the boost up and impact from Baroki's off. Still focused on Kerrigan and still can't get the job done. EG thrust back into banana it's just circ remaining and he's gonna go down nice and easy from twists and we're all tied up with nobody going down so they're building even more money on the phase side of things i think that was well done but uh i, I mean again i still think with the one smoke towards ct spawn and the fact that there were no counter nades coming out really from the ct side if they'd got the opening kill on carrying a rain in there that maybe could have worked out it could have been fun to see just not possible here carrying doing a great job at minimizing his exposure Getting the kill, staying alive, and then getting the follow-up here. Just too much to handle. Three to three. All tied up. Which is real bad news for EG. Again, if you want to cause an upset in a, in a game like this, you really need to... Especially starting on the T side of Inferno, like the first recipe for an upset here would be, you know, control the economy out of the pistol round, run up to like a five, six, nothing lead, something like that. Kerrigan with a little, uh, you know... Just perfunctory clear of logs or of tree. Didn't really didn't really go all the way deep. So there's still Neil and just hiding there. Just a P250 on him, but that could catch Kerrigan off guard. Yeah. Just pretending to do it. Kind of like going through the motions a little bit. We'll see if timing is going to be with them. Oh, nicely done. Good start here. And Rain's going to be really careful. Shut down. Wallbang headshot from the Deagle through the Ooh. turn board up there. And Breeze is going to be finding twists. So this is looking amazing for EG. Just as we talked about how... They need to keep phase down and how this is a little bit of a worrying stop. This kind of a round is huge for them. Yeah, all provided by Neil and all provided essentially by by the kind of like 50% clear of tree from Kerrigan. One little mistake with massive consequences and they're going to take the one round lead, EG. Cool. It's good, but ultimately the the money on phase is still so strong at the moment. Even just winning three in a row, that they're gonna be they're gonna be good to buy. And you're not gonna get world. too many more rounds like that against against Probably phase. Not. Yeah, Probably. but it's nice to have one, for sure. Ooh. I mean, even part, part of the other issue too with that kind of uh, you know not not really clearing tree and thinking it's thinking that there's no danger in that point is rain is also well over committed to that position where he gets stuck in a situation where he can't get out either. That's an even bigger disaster. The op goes down, so all that money built up, Brokey's going to have to reinvest everything he's got to get a full kit with the AWP. Oh, it's real interesting now. That's actually losing a lot, yeah. And also. Yeah, yeah. All right. Kerrigan calling out. They're playing very slow in Banana, very slow in B. So imagine they're going to start holding their nades a little bit more phase, not going for the full utility dump all the way down, play for the late game, the late round situations. Well, it's true. I mean, we've, we've talked about the previous round how, you know, even even if EG didn't have a lot of options, they, they hit a bombsite with no grenades left. So that is true. Nice start from Brokey taking down Cirque again. Banana 
Early fight being won here behind the face side. That's actually huge. I mean, look at look at the B defenders. Look at Kerrigan and Rain. Only Rain has used what, like a flashbang and a nade or a Molotov and a flashbang, whatever it might have been. But I mean, really, two nades used and Broke, he's still able to find the opening pick with the AWP. So they kind of changed the look. While EG is expecting this barrage of utilities and fire to come at them, it's just an AWP peeking down with a clear line of sight. They really do slow it down afterwards. Taking control of boiler room though, and I'm assuming control of middle to follow it up, so it's kind of what we expect. But this time Brokey's on the other side, so that is kind of the hallmark, I think, of any good Inferno Orper is just being in a new position every time you get a kill. Keep moving, make it real hard to guess where the next fight's gonna be happening. They don't have much of a choice here either, might as well try and go through. Flash is pretty decent, but Rain is right on top. And that's a great couple of kills. Gonna pick up the bomb here, Neelan, but I'm not sure what could be accomplished. Gonna go for the bomb plot, and the grenade will actually take him down. No bomb plot allowed. Good defense, and um, obviously Brokey being very active with that AWP. Yeah, EG's at the point now in the game, I think, where they've got to be able to... They've got to start putting some pressure on the A bomb site as well. They're going to have to start seeing if they can find some success there, which I, 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 I would imagine is a pretty scary prospect, especially when you have Brokey like this shutting down Breeze over in Boiler. But, I mean, you've, you've kind of gone back to the B bomb site with quite consistency, uh, with, with a decent amount of consistency here, and if you can't establish success on the other side of the map, FaZe is going to be able to cheat and stack that bomb site. A little bit more speed behind it this time. I mean, they were denied this kind of a play earlier just from, I think, knee damage, but quick boost over, trying to see if they can put some pressure on. There are three people here early on, so got to be real careful. And flashed in, running for his rain, and he gets the headshot on Neil and right away. So I appreciate the change pace for EG trying to get that done, but um, they, got, they got caught by that flashbang perfectly. Perfect. Ooh, nice shot from Brokey. Five on three, no one's gone down, and Brokey with his AWP is starting to be a force. Ten kills for him, he's been all over the map. We saw the pick on Breeze and Boiler in the previous round. We've seen a number of good kills down Banana as well. So it's starting to get real difficult for EG to read where that AWP is going to be positioned. It's Rush actually getting hit through the smoke like that. Fairly annoying when you're just trying to get a little bit of control here. So going to be spotted as well, and he's oh, he's not dead. We'll be dead once Kerrigan comes through again. Shots from the smoke there from Kerrigan. He's going to land a shot on Breeze as well. If he can rush, in pretty much an unwinnable position here. He's going to be found by Rain. I don't know even if trying to find the bomb would have been a better choice necessarily. So even if he wanted very to, comfortable. Kerrigan had just dropped into pit as well. Kerrigan yeah. was always going to be the snake in the grass to prevent that kind of a plant coming out. So FaZe is uh, really starting to work, EG. And outside of the hiccup of uh, Kerrigan not checking. You can also study the rounds that you lost, I guess. But, yeah. but it's, it's nice to have a, a sense of... Summon working. I'd say EG are showing that right now, so it's a, pretty, it's a pretty decent position to be in. Unfortunately, though, for them, the money is not that great. Deagles, a Glock, and a Tech-9 there on Hexed, and we'll see if that's going to be enough to create an opening. It was once, but like you pointed out, that's probably not going to be happening again here. Ooh, Rain, he spotted one deep. Got to be careful about close. That's the Tech-9 caught yet again with a lack of information of where these pistols have positioned themselves. Up to Kerrigan to try and recover. He's found the equalizer. Now looking for the rebuttal from Hex, who's going to play this very passively, very conservatively. Yeah, but still a bit scary, and it gives up an AK up there. So more to fight with on the EG side. Ticking past the minute mark now. Rops, that's a nice flashbang. Timed perfectly. Couldn't find the kill on him, but still, good little trick. Bomb is at the bottom of T mid, so I want to be at least uh, keeping an eye on that and make sure that that doesn't get lost in the middle of all of the chaos. But FaZe still seem like they're not under that much pressure here. Putting out their final smoke at about 40 seconds. This ain't Vitality. Rush is going to go pick it up. No concerns with the bomb. <laughs> it's good. I like it. We have a couple of teams like that that come into some really funky situations it's just funny that it's vitality that i feel is like the most known for just leaving the bomb way back because they have some of the most experienced players we have in the scene and yeah. overall <laughs> they've got like seven or eight major trophies between all of them because everyone's thinking well we've got so much experience someone else is going to be watching this surely so yeah no problem. Uh, yeah <laughs> i can i can forget about it because no the other guys aren't going yeah. to yeah twist with a good finish there but that was a two on four with almost no time and and obviously no real utility to set it up with so not too surprising that they come out on top of that one. 
And FaZe just seem to be getting back into the groove of things here. Still building that money. So we see if EG could, uh, could find something else. Still seems to be very much focused on getting Banana and eventually executing into the B-bomb side. Haven't seen too many exciting wraps on the A-bomb side or even wraps through CT spawn into B. There are a lot of options on Inferno. But like you pointed out, I guess with a brand new in-game leader, there's, also, there's a, just a limit to how deep you yeah, even push things. Certainly, and a limit to like how, how much imp improv he can bring into the equation because you're still trying to kind of figure out the comfort level of your team. And I mean, you can even see it in the pregame interview, Anil and... Uh, not not the most confident answers and i mean understandably he's in an entirely new situation with an entirely new group of players who play a completely different way of counter-strike than he's grown up in so um a lot of moving parts at the moment with eg so i, I think for this event for me with eg is just like let's see what we're working with you know i thought he had a great origin story okay how did, how did you get into eg well got an email <laughs> <laughs> that's how easy it is it's great Great stuff. Two for one trade though. Um, took a nice early headshot there over at Archway, but unfortunately, they get uh, a little bit more back on the phase side. And again, the clock is running down. Speaking of uh, that earlier hint that Karrion was talking about, you know, how they play slow over at the B bomb site. Now we're a little bit later in, and they had a smoke down at about 45 seconds or so. They still have two Molotovs left. So you can tell phase are trying a little bit more to save some of the nades. Maybe not as many as you'd want over at the B bomb site, but still. They, uh, they should have something for a retake if it comes to it. 25 seconds, and I don't even know. They are almost this not doing a, anything here. This is a fake. I don't mind this at all. This isn't a bad fake whatsoever. They're using all the attention they've given to the B bomb site throughout this half to pull an extra defender over. Brokey's now committed, but you have to get through ROPS, and yeah, that's hard. That's not easy. Eight seconds on the clock. Cirque just making his way up to the bomb. There's no time. That, I mean, I don't mind the fake call. No, you're right. Cirque had to be way more aggressive in trying to come through with Nealon to at least attempt to trade that kill, right? You can't just leave it up to Nealon to find it and get a free bomb site. You have to be there being aggressive with him to make sure you can get into that bomb site. The fake was sprung, and the fake worked. Just the other side of it never sprung into action. Or or even if, the, if, if everything had played out the same, but they had 20 more seconds on the clock, it could have been a very different round as well. But it just it felt like... That was, yeah, it was real late, unfortunately. It's just an opportunity that slips away, right? Because yeah. you're saying even even if Circa's coming up a second or two after this, even if he's not there for the immediate trade, at least then you have the information of where Rops is positioned. At least then you can go for a fight with the information. Just no opportunity for that at all. Looked like that little exchange in the middle could have been dangerous for Broki and Hex both, um, but nobody dies. So they can both continue to fight in the round. Rain, that's a gap. Oh, <laughs> no way! The that's just random, right? He didn't hear it. That, there's no way. I got nothing for you. I, I would assume so. That's so, it looked like he... There was no smoke on rain screen and you shot him right in the head. As he jumped up, like he caught him. It's all going wrong for EG. Two deagles and two AK-47s stalled out by utility. They've got three smokes to work with, two flashbangs. However, they do have four defenders here, and Rain is positioned at the car at Banana, so he's got a deep angle down. Rain also has a Molotov for defense if he does get pressured for whatever reason, so FaZe has complete control of the map, complete control of the situation, and no reason for them to feel uncomfortable. Elon probably realizing that there was someone jump spotting that one. So they have some good info. Carrion is brought back, but it's possible that he just dropped a couple of nades behind Rain and just, you know, is now making his way back. Ooh, missed shot here from Twist, but eventually he'll make up for it with a double anyway, so all is forgiven. Carrion showing up for a minute too. Gonna lose a couple of players in this round, but with 20 seconds, it's hard to see how Breeze could easily win this one. Broke is just waiting in off angle. But even if he wasn't, even if he just stayed tucked deep in, that probably would have been a, a winning move as well, just because of the time that was left. So yeah. an expensive round for FaZe, but they don't care any of it. Eight to four. Three rounds left. And that's why FaZe kind of stops caring about any losses they incur in these rounds. Yeah. They've got money to buy no matter what happens. They're in a good position. So on that AWP, nowhere near the output of Broki. I mean, he's playing the T side of Infernos. So that could be part of it, but you'd love to see him try and open up some of these rounds because they need it. Nealon, though, opening up on Carrigan and not getting flashed. Brain trying to set that up for his uh, captain, but didn't work out this time. So another good opening on Banana that they absolutely have to build on. I feel like EG need the last three rounds here just to start to feel a little bit better about what's going on on Inferno. 
going to be boosting up. So bringing Twist over. Does leave Arch very vulnerable at the moment. I still do. I mean, it's a risky play, but I love the fact that FaZe seem to be really determined to find out what's happening in middle. Pretty much all throughout this first half. I just like that they're like challenging at these choke points, yeah. right? Like another kill for Brokey before any kind of control or any kind of presence can be established by EG. I like the fact that they're just like, you know, come, come, test. We'll, we'll challenge all of these and see if you can actually gain map control. Twist has a big job to do boost it up. Yes, he does, but it's a nice shot. He falls down and robs on the other side by Arch. He was spotted by Brokey out there, Bree, so they knew what was coming. The fact that Brokey saw that just means everything. Cirque now on his own. Unbelievable return. <laughs> <laughs> sends a bullet through the smoke to catch Twist. That is wild. But he still has a huge job on his hands here. One versus two. Not sure quite where they're coming from. And they're already on top of him with the nade and the headshot. And that'll absolutely take him out. So nice retake from FaZe. But that actually looked winnable for a minute there for EG. Yeah, it's just such a, I mean, a 1v2 at the B bomb site certainly winnable. It's just, I mean, you get this 1v2 with that fortunate shot through the smoke, and then the other two players are already there and arriving. Cirque doesn't have a whole lot of time, a whole lot of options in that situation. <laughs> yeah, that is a good point. Um, he's a prime position at the moment, and his mechanics are crazy, so you can see how it's paying off as well. 9 to 4, and the 14th round is here. Faze winning five in a row, and Rops might get the opening. Indeed, the timing is perfect for it. Very difficult when you're coming up the stairs like that on the T side. Rush out of the round. See? Still some banana control being attempted from the EG side, but again, they're being naded back here. Another deep Molotov to go back with a grenade on top. Ooh, actually, it does blow up Hexed anyway. Didn't think that was going to be enough damage. Yeah, this is this is FaZe just taking all the liberties at the moment now deep into the half, and they realize they've kind of put EG in a, in a place where they are a little bit afraid to challenge, a little bit afraid to be aggressive and assertive. So FaZe is just like, yeah, if we're going to have this much space on the CT side, yeah, we'll push up, we'll, ch we'll throw nades down. Rain with some trigger discipline, calling it out to Kerrigan. Oh, that's awkward. That's really unfortunate. <laughs> well, that's, I mean, they're still probably going to come out on top, but that, um, that trigger discipline... Almost backfiring a bit. Twist with a nice <laughs> shot there at the end, and um, it's 10 on the board for FaZe. Yep, Kerrigan just cracking up. He's like, thanks, man. I'll take those two kills. <laughs> Nicely done. I feel like that um, that issue of, of you know thinking that you've probably just already got the kill and moving on to the next target is one of the more frustrating experiences. Yeah, in the game. Rain's brain was obviously like double kill. Yeah. Double oh. kill to triple kill. Got to get that first one. 15th round and the good start for EG based on winning the pistol which got them the first three rounds well, is now you want me to put it in even worse terms for you go on tell EG me. hasn't won a single gun round yeah that's that's a good point and Neelan just they won the pistol in the two rounds after that you know one was a force buy one was a save from phase and then later on they just kind of won a sneaky round with with pistols that they caught Kerrigan off guard but that was a save round that they won was their fourth Trying to switch it up and going for uh, an explosion out of apartments. I like it because they have been going a lot for the B-bomb site, so it's an attempt to try and change things up. They almost got shut down doing it, but now at least they have a bomb plant. Cirque and Breeze, two versus three with a bomb plant, and a pretty quick rotation coming in on the side of FaZe. So they are at least here. Not quite sure where the remaining player is. They probably know one of them is uh, down towards that pit area, but graveyard for Breeze. I like this. going to be a tough hold. Rain taking his time clearing things out. They're real deep into the timer. This retake has got to begin now. Breeze, important shot here on Rain. Nails it. Straight headshot. Traded by Twist with the off. Inside of the smoke. Cirque has one. He's spamming down. That's Brokey. Comes out the other side. Impossible for Cirque to know. And even that round is ripped away. 11 to 4. Half clear off the rails. Yeah, this is not ideal. It's not a great situation. We were mentioning at one point at like 4 to 6. It was like, okay, if they can just get together like 1 to 2 more rounds, then you have a little bit of a... Uh, you're, you're okay with it. <laughs> and obviously... Uh, they didn't get there, so uh, a huge mountain to climb for EG, starting with the pistol. Brokey clocking in at 
16 to 4, which is pretty great. And Twist is there at 15 kills, 13 on carry. They're, they're just having such a good time. Well, that shouldn't be, it really shouldn't be super surprising to anyone. I mean, obviously, with, with Brokey's level of play this year, that, that's one factor. But also, new team, new in-game leader, shuffling players in, even Rush coming back in for Automatic. You're going to be a little bit messy on your flashbangs and your timings and your utility to force uh, map control and force offers off angles. So, yeah, Brokey had a bit of a field day in that first half. Had success everywhere he went. And unfortunately, in some way, it might even be more tricky on the CT side because, you know, at least on the T side, like we saw, you can try to run some some defaults. They had some rounds even in, in losing that they look like they could have won, you know, some basic B executes that can work even at the worst of times. So on the CT side, though, I mean, getting the rotations down perfectly and saving all the nades and everything else, it, it might be very tricky. And you're playing up against Carrigan as an in-game leader, which is never a good time. Oh, Nealon's on his horse trying to get over. Rush has to slow it down. There's the first kill. That's not bad. Kerrigan's a little bit blind. Missed shots from Rush. Nealon can't make it through the smoke. That's going to be the bomb site lost and overrun by the Glocks of EG. Hex is already here on the flank, and he looks like he wants to get tricky. I thought he had the game. It looked like a knife out from Kerrigan, and he's going to go down. Oh, no. Rocks is going to fall next, and now Rain and Brokey are the only ones alive here. Two versus two with the bomb freshly planted, so there is a chance for EG to go for the retake. Brokey He's going to find one in the rain on the other one. And even though it had a real opening there, EG, it'll be FaZe to pick it up. I think that retake beginning was like the worst moment for, for FaZe. I have to imagine they were all reloading. Because yeah. when that initial contact comes in, nobody's able to really fight back. Super awkward. They still get it done. 12 to 4. <laughs> I mean, Kerrigan stayed alive, but I think his teammate was actually in the middle of that reload, even yeah. though he was buying time technically. But the uh, fun and games are over, especially for EG. 12 to 4 right now. Phase looking to close this one out really, really quickly. Again, we shouldn't really be surprised, but I would still like to see EG pick up some more rounds just to, to have a sense of, uh, you know, of what might work or just to get the roster a little bit of more experience in general playing against the top team like this one. Kerrigan with a couple of kills with a MAC-10. Technically finding a third one in Breeze, so a lot of information to be handed over to the rest of the team. Twist is ready if Breeze wants to come through. The smoke being set up here. Gonna be calling it in. So look at the two-man stack, so just a question of timing at the moment. There comes Breeze with the Deagle, but Brokey's there to receive him on the other side. And heck, now, one versus four inside of the bomb site. Brokey's gonna find it. We did have the 5-7, which has been... Um, Having some highlights recently. And look at how hard, I mean, just look at the style which Twist kind of entered into, into into water, into grill area. You know, like quietly just kind of walking there. So there was never any timing, never any sound cue for EG to get used to. They didn't know how to really spring the trap that they had set up. Even the players following in were kind of walking and silent as well. So no ability to track where FaZe was actually going. 13 to 4. FaZe just three rounds away from a nice quick start to their map of Blast Premier. Their first map of Blast Premier. That's a good opening. What we're seeing here. Good chance to get warmed up. They're having... That's a laugh. That's having a, such a good time. That's a gif. You don't ever really want to see your opponents laughing that way, do you? No, like laughing is one thing. <laughs> laughing of like, what am I seeing is a whole different beast. <laughs> Condescending laugh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't have to fight back harder. He still is he's 19 and 4 right now, Rogue B, so... I don't know what the record is the current uh, moment for the for the Blast ecosystem in terms of ratings. I don't think Brokey's hitting it just yet, but, you know, a couple of good, you know, quad kill rounds here. Maybe it's possible. Brokey showing up with the Galil, and it's a nice triple spray down. If you're going to be winning this hard, at least make it a record, you know? Try and see if you can find it. True. Um, what is the... Uh, I'm trying to think. I, I wasn't keeping track of how long this run is at one point. What, what was it, like four? When, what, was, what was it when EG got their fourth round? I think it was four to four, okay. right? That's not good. I want to say. I was hoping it wasn't that bad. <laughs> yeah, well, they're getting beat up so badly that even even you, Jason, started to take pity, which is, is rare. <laughs> it was four to three. All right. They took a one round lead. So it's uh, it's been what eleven straight now for Phase. They've had no no issues. That's a, that's a real issue. They have rifles now, though. The pretty standard type setup. Nothing wrong with that. Running down the Neeland. It's, it's actually going to work just fine. Running out of bullets, though. Not that great. 
And Kerrigan comes through the punish. And because of that deeper smoke behind him, Rush can't really help out that easily. So, quick trade out there. Kerrigan can take a lot of damage, so maybe they can still win the round. And quickly looking like they want to take advantage over towards A. They know a rotation is going to be heading towards the B bomb site. Breeze gets dropped. Important trade from Hex as he gets aggressive. But now, FaZe is feeling brokey and rain like they have a 2v1 here. Reinforcements are coming. Good play from Hex to get aggressive. And Cirque has the line behind him. They finally stopped the run at 11. Nicely done. That was a long battle from pretty much from the start of it by the by quad, and then it just kept going, trading and trading and trading. But in the end, trading favorably for EG. So this really never stopped. You could see how they just keep going. 14 to five, and you're right. Finally, putting a little bit of a slowdown on the phase side. Yeah, chicken was stuck by the bench. Into teaspoon. Not the smartest animals. No, no, I doubt it. I don't, I don't have any personal experience, but we'll take your word for it. Ooh, aggression from the SMG. Nealon gets blinded right at the end. Never knew Twist was on the other side of things. He protects his opper. He's going to start leading the way towards the B bomb site. They might not even be afraid to just challenge it off the bat, but smoke comes up and Twist is happy to wait. Early smoke caused at the B bomb site. So EG, even out of a victory, are going to have some utility problems in the later stages of this round. Maybe for the same reason, the phase are quite happy to slow this down and just take a look around, see what happens. Not hearing anything more going down at the moment, so been a minute since that smoke uh, evaporated over at the B-bomb site. Putting a little bit of pressure on the archway is Rain. Still keeping two people here and two people at the B-bomb site. And Breeze has shifted over into the site itself. Previously, they were just holding on to Rap side with no real presence at the A-bomb site. However, FaZe is lining up. This looks to be a fake. It looks to be Rain and Kerrigan applying pressure, showing presence. If that gets a kill, that would be huge, but it's handled well. All that's left is the three on two with the B bomb site. The fake falls flat. And if they got either one of those kills, presumably it's going to work out beautifully. But now they actually could be in a little bit of trouble. 25 seconds. Molotov not quite spreading into the corner. So a chance for Rush to still have an impact with this M4. 20 seconds now on the clock. They're starting to make their way through. But Brokey gets blown up before they even get the bomb plant. And Rush will find a kill on Rops. Stops the bomb plant on Twist. Can't really keep doing that. And he's all alone. Looking to do some more damage. Again, the mechanics is great to watch. Look at all of this. A couple of more kills going his way, but they're still going to lose the round. No, but those are nice kills at the end. That's a that's a good play from Twist to come back for the fight and just see what you can get. Two frags, take some money away. FaZe is going to be, I think, on a half buy in this next round. They're not going to try and force up, so any of that uh, limiting of the money growth for EG is massive. And EG just barely recover. You could see the plan in action there for FaZe, but great uh, defense over at the A bomb side. If they don't actually get that defense in, it's... Yeah, it's possible that they would start to rotate people out of the B-bomb Yeah, if one of those time. kills comes out, Cirque leaves yeah. entirely. He's stuck in CT spawn, and then you never know what you can get. Maybe there's a little bit more time. There's not an op shot at Coffins to kind of take the attention away from Rush's position. That could have been dangerous. So Deagle's for phase, which is still can present a problem. Yeah, quite a few. What were you doing in 2012 when Counter-Strike started? Um, I had gone through, I think, ditching my third degree or something like that in the university. Nice. What was it? Uh, it was physics and then biology and then English and it's just, I'm not good at any of it, so. You really, you really had like a sliding scale of difficult I know. degrees to go through. You started at physics and you're like, this is too much work. You go down to biology, too much work. English. Exactly. You know who's good at physics, though. It's, it's Carrigan. <laughs> landing, doing the trigonometry with the deagle, hitting the headshots. I can't believe it, but somehow they're actually in this round. They're getting the bomb plant. They actually, EG are just walking away from it. Wow. They, they can't even do it. Yeah, physics is very hard. Biology is very hard. English, very easy. <laughs> <laughs> also boring at the same time. Um, so, yeah, I, I guess I, mostly I was just racking up student debt. That's um, the American way. Good way to spend time, I guess. Nice. Oh, God. Yeah, it's all you can do. I remember, uh, to be honest, in, you know, years later, my wife told me this. She said, because at some point, I think I'd been casting out track for a week, and I basically told her, I said, I'm actually, I'm going to quit university for like the, the fifth time, and I'm going to, I'm going to pursue this 
you're shouting into the microphone thing. And she was like, um, yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and she, she told her parents and her dad had said like, are you, are you sure that this is going to actually like, you know, is this really like a good idea, you know, <laughs> in a bit of concerned way, <laughs> yeah. which I can appreciate. Like, I think that's a reasonable question. No, it definitely time. is. So he's got a lot of depth and he's talking about video games. Is that <laughs> <laughs> um, Am I reading this right? Yeah. <laughs> Am I connecting all the dots? Tough times. Um, 22nd round and a steal, not by face, but just by Kerrigan. Headshots all across the ball with the Deagle. And now they're one round away from taking it back here. Nice grenades and the combination of Rush and Neil and the takedown twist, which seems like justice. I remember Neil and a couple of times burning alive at the bottom of Banana there. So good to get some uh, some revenge. Yeah, that's a good sequence from EG. Double nade towards tree, force out the opera. You're fighting with it as well through the smoke. Molotov to prevent anyone from re-peaking for the, for the fight back. That's a McKill and massive damage on a Brokey. So Rops is uh, going to be put in position and activated to try and make something happen. We know he's a he's a bit of a somewhat of a maestro in this position and how he can find openings from a very difficult spot on the map to do it. That flashbang is so good, but Breeze is just maybe a couple of inches further back. Otherwise, Rops would have definitely killed him right then. So nice setup here. AWP on Cirque to bring down Rain. Something I really miss. I Cirque's orping at one point was. Yeah. A beautiful thing to watch. It certainly was. Kerrigan's going to get close up behind the B smoke. They're looking for someone to produce anything, and they're hoping the timing of this play from Kerrigan is going to catch him off. He jumps into the spawn smoke, and he does find it. Creative way to find an entry, and all oh, you've got to be crapping your pants if you're kneeling right now. SMG, 1v3, it feels, at this bomb site, hiding for the moment. Kerrigan, he doesn't know where you are. Neelan's position given up, but they still need to clear him out. 15 seconds on the clock, and this has to be fast. Brokey can't find anything, and Neelan is going to survive. Hex and Cirque get the final two kills. That was well done. I mean, even even though it seems like he's not doing much, just the fact that he doesn't show himself to Kerrigan for a long, long time back there. By the time he does, the backup is there. So well done. Nice, as you said, creative way for Kerrigan to open it. I actually thought for a minute that they were going to be able to, to win the round even behind it, but couldn't find that last anchor on the B bomb site. So 15 to 7. Again, the chances for EG to win this are very, very, very low, but I think that they're, they're getting enough on the board now that... They have something to look for, and they're getting they're getting tested in a real way here. No, but EG is one of those teams that it's important that we that you you watch this game with the proper context of what kind of a position this team is in, right? Because if True. you put them in the same context as a phase or even as like a liquid, you know, should be contending to make it all the way to the fall finals out of the group stage, should be contending for incredible performances and great games. Then this is going to be disappointing. But this is still very early in the lineup's lifeline, so yeah, I mean. This is really kind of an investigative tournament, it feels, for EG, just to see what they're working with and help them kind of plan the route they're going to take moving forward. Getting up to seven with the rifles that they have, they can they can make a little bit of a run of this. Deagles, just a Glock on Kerrigan. Rain already going down early on, and Breeze, he's going to continue. M4A4 in hand, so he's got some bullets still left. I thought the change to the M4A1 would have would have made a bigger difference inside of the server at a professional level, but so far I feel like it's still seeing a lot of M4A1s. Yeah, no, definitely. It's still very, very strong. And no R8s, unfortunately. Yeah, that is weird. It's very sad. Brokey and Kerrigan trying to find something with these deagles. Nobody's in pit, nobody's home. Rush is in the bomb site. Two clean kills. And EG continue to fight on. Knocking on the doors of double digits. They're getting there. Slowly but surely. And still, I mean, taking a real fight to phase of the moment on that banana position. They're not afraid to go and they trust in their nades. They know they feel like they know what they're doing. So that's good. That's a good way to get started. And we're seeing tech nines and deagles now. So phase taking a deep breath before they're going to try and close it out in the next round. Unless they can find a real cool opening here, which wouldn't... Uh, Leave that completely off the table either. This is, this is where it's going to be interesting to see the defense that EG mounts, because, I mean, if if FaZe gets space to work with towards A, like in hulls, and if they get brackets control with these pistols, they can set up a really, really deadly hulls pop, a swarm towards that bomb site. So I'm curious to see how EG decides what kind of aggression they're going to come out with. Breeze in the pit for the moment. You've got Hex and Quad underneath the balcony and Cirque on Rapside with the AWP. 
Even Rush is rotated over. Nice Molotov on Hex. He's going to be forced forward while he's trying to get that spree. <laughs> what a turnaround! A Tech Nine twist is there with the kill as well. And now it's a two on two. Rush very low on health. And Robs, he's hearing the footsteps. He knows where Breeze is. He's going to find him easily. And now it's all on Rush. A minute. The bomb is in the middle here, but I don't even think they realize. So Rush is running away. And that surely, I don't know, it might have been hurt by Twist. They're going to pick up the bomb and go straight for this plant. So, oh, wow. What a way to trade their way through there. FaZe probably going to win this one. This is the frustrating thing about Rops is, I mean, Breeze is watching for that exact.